All right. You wonder why politics is the way it is now? An asset. You wonder why politics is the way it is now? Do you really trust the politicians? My main thing is, is you know why the outsiders, Bernie Sanders, Ted Cruz, Donald Trump, are making such an impact? Because the American public is sick and tired of it. You wanted the House in 94, you got the House, you got the Senate, you balanced the budget, but well, what have you done since then? What have you done? You haven't done a fucking thing. And that brings me back to a movie I watched back in, way back in 1982. It was called Network. Uh, some of you old guys might have seen it, but I'm going to throw some audio clips in of that movie. Tell me it doesn't still ring true. I don't know why people are still stuck on the establishment fucking presidential candidates like Hillary and Rubio and I don't know what Kasich would be but I really don't trust Kasich but Jeb Bush Kicked him to the curb fucking early. And all the rest of these. Fiorina. Oh, she supported Cruz. You know, fuck. Really? Fucking gag me with a fork. But anyway, I'm going to throw this video up. I'm going to use some uh, video footage that uh, I didn't have any other use for. And I'll put in the audio of the 82 Network video. And tell me it doesn't ring true today. 1982. You no, know, Reagan took over in, what was it, 1980? And as soon as the Iranians knew that... Uh, Reagan was going to get elected. They released the hostages. And then you got this Obama fuck that set this whole Navy sailor fucking thing up with them in order to get it passed even though it's still not signed. I'm telling you, we're sick and tired of it, and we're not going to take it anymore. So we'll talk to you later. I don't have to tell you things are bad. Everybody knows things are bad. It's a depression. Everybody's out of work or scared of losing their job. The dollar buys a nickel's worth. Banks are going bust. Shopkeepers keep a gun under the counter. Punks are running wild in the street. And there's nobody anywhere who seems to know what to do, and there's no end to it. We know the air is unfit to breathe, and our food is unfit to eat. We sit watching our TVs while some local newscaster tells us that today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. We know things are bad, worse than bad. 
They're crazy. It's like everything everywhere is going crazy, so we don't go out anymore. We sit in the house, and slowly the world we're living in is getting smaller, and all we say is, please, at least leave us alone in our living rooms. Let me have my toaster and my TV and my steel-belted radios, and I won't say anything. Just leave us alone. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad. I don't want you to protest, I don't want you to write, I don't want you to write to your congressman because I wouldn't know what to tell you to write. I don't know what to do about the depression and the inflation and the Russians and the crime in the street. All I know is that first, you've got to get mad. You've got to say, I'm a human being, God damn it! My life has value! So, I want you to get up now. I want all of you to get up out of your chairs. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore! I want you to get up right now. Get up, Stay with go to your windows, open them, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. Things have got to change. How many stations has this you got? You've got to get mad. You've got to say, I'm I know it goes to Louisville and Atlanta. Hell. We're not going to take this anymore. Then we'll figure out what to do about the depression and the inflation and the oil crisis. But first, get up out of your chairs, open the window, stick your head out and yell, and say, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm I'm not gonna take this anymore! Who are you talking to, Herb? CGG Atlanta. Are they yelling in Atlanta, Herb? Are they yelling in Atlanta, Ted? But first, you've got to get mad! You've got to say, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not gonna take this anymore! They're yelling in Baton Rouge. God damn it! Get up, get up, get up out of your Son of a bitch! We struck the mother load! Stick your head out of the window, open it, then stick your head out and keep yelling and yell, I'm as mad as hell! I'm not gonna take this anymore! Just get up from your chairs right now. Go to Where the window. Where are you going? Everybody I want to see if anybody's yelling. Window, open it and stick your head out and yell and keep yelling. I'm as mad as hell. I'm not going to take this Today, Edward George Ruddy was the chairman of the board of the Union Broadcasting Systems, and he died at 11 o'clock this morning of a heart condition, and woe is us. We're in a lot of trouble. So, a rich little man with white hair died. What has that got to do with the price of rice, right? And why is that woe to us? Because you people... And 62 million other Americans are listening to me right now because less than 3% of you people read books. Because less than 15% of you read newspapers. Because the only truth you know is what you get over this tube. Right now, there is a whole, an entire generation that never knew anything that didn't come out of this tube. This tube is the gospel, the ultimate revelation. This tube can make or break presidents, popes, prime ministers. This tube is the most awesome goddamn force in the whole godless world. And woe is us if it ever falls into the hands of the wrong people. And that's why woe is us that Edward George Ruddy died. Because this company is now in the hands of CCA, the Communication Corporation of America. There's a new chairman of the board, a man called Frank Hackett, sitting in Mr. Ruddy's office on the 20th floor. And when the 12th largest company in the world controls the most awesome goddamn propaganda force in the whole godless world, who knows what shit will be peddled for truth on this network? 
So you listen to me. Listen to me. Television is not the truth. Television is a goddamn amusement park. Television is a circus, a carnival, a traveling troupe of acrobats, storytellers, dancers, singers, jugglers, sideshow freaks, lion tamers, and football players. We're in the boredom killing business. So if you want the truth, go to God. Go to your gurus. Go to yourselves. Because that's the only place you're ever going to find any real truth. <laughs> but man, you're never going to get any truth from us. We'll tell you anything you want to hear. We lie like hell. We'll tell you that uh, Kojak always gets the killer and that nobody ever gets cancer in Archie Bunker's house. And no matter how much trouble the hero is in, don't worry, just look at your watch. At the end of the hour, he's going to win. We'll tell you any shit you want to hear. We deal in illusions, man. None of it is true. But you people sit there day after day, night after night, all ages, colors, creeds. We're all you know. You're beginning to believe the illusions we're spinning here. You're beginning to think that the tube is reality and that your own lives are unreal. You do whatever the tube tells you. You dress like the tube. You ate like the tube. You raise your children like the tube. You even think like the tube. This is mass madness, you maniacs. In God's name, you people are the real thing. We are the illusion. So turn off your television sets. Turn them off now. Turn them off right now. Turn them off and leave them off. Turn them off right in the middle of the sentence I'm speaking to you now. Turn them off. Here is a prime example The questions of the day, I just want to ask, and I know this will be brief because I expect you will have absolutely nothing to say about it. Well, if you know that, why are you that, going to I, ask you? No, know, but i got to ask anyway. Okay. So the RNC, you are aware, filed okay. two lawsuits this morning against the State Department, um, seeking uh, email and other communications, both from Secretary Clinton's time, from you know, top staff during her time in office, and then after she left between the department and Clinton-related organizations. Yeah. Um, what do you have to say about that? Well, we're aware, and as you know, Matt, uh, as these matters are matters of litigation, we don't comment. Um, so the suits, uh, both of them, I believe, but certainly one of them does, want uh, ask the judge to order you guys to produce the material by July 1st, which is four months or so. Um, given the amount of time... Look at the nervousness. To go, ...to go through and... Look at his lips. Purposes, ...all of the other emails... That Lies and obfuscation out. time. Is, is that something that is possible? I mean, even if... This is the no best reporter in the State do, Department. Uh, could you, the senior could you guy. And would you do it if you were ordered to do it? Well, again, I don't. Uh, I don't want to comment about matters that. Forget about are, that. Just the time I, frame. Just no, I, I know. I don't want to comment on matters uh, uh, that are that are under litigation right now. As you can understand, that's not a good place for us to be. And I also am <clears throat> wary of getting into hypotheticals in terms of uh, what. Now, let me tell you, this is the same guy that two weeks ago said that he had information from the Department of Justice that said. Hillary Clinton was not being looked at for an indictment. This is this is how much lies and bullshit they put out. And be done in a certain amount of time, um, simply because we're working our we're working our way through this right now. That said, uh, you know, uh, as I think we've demonstrated with the release of the 53,000 pages of documents that we, you know. Even though we didn't meet every deadline, we certainly take court orders seriously. And when we can't accommodate in some way, we, we, we're open and honest about why we aren't and what we're trying to do to fix it. So, you know, uh, we take court orders seriously. I mean, I want to make that clear. Um, but I, I, I'm afraid I can't go into any great predictions about uh, our ability to produce 
uh, what's being asked for uh, in these suits on a certain timeline. Do you know um, the, what, the reason that the RMC says that it's filing these suits is because they filed through normal FOIA channels these requests back months ago. Uh, and aside from getting just a kind of s standard form letter response saying that the requests have been received, they haven't heard anything. You know, if, if, is that correct? Is that, are these are these uh, requests actively being looked at right now? I mean, are people going through and trying to fulfill these requests? I, I don't have the answer to that, and I don't have to look and see if I can get something on that. And I yeah. don't know how much detail I'll be yeah. able to Yeah, you wouldn't know anything about that. that. Because, again, now we are talking about... Though it, though it may not have always been, it is now a matter of litigation. So there may be a limit to how much detail we can provide you, but I'll ask that question. Okay. Um, Lion fucker. On this, else? Okay. All right. Can I just go to Iran quickly? Yeah. Uh, one, you so you've seen the reports of the new miss, missile test today, um, including one that apparently had, you know, if Israel must be wiped off the earth or something written on it. Yeah. Uh, what do you make of that? Well, we have seen uh, these reports of additional missile launches today, and just as with the earlier ones, uh, we're going to take a look at it, and uh, uh, we'll take whatever appropriate response is necessary, either at the UN or unilaterally. Um, uh, and obviously, uh, without being able to confirm these um, uh, you know, the graffiti on them about Israel, I, I can't confirm that independently, but obviously, uh, we condemn all threats to Israel, and we'll, we stand with yeah, Israel do. To, uh, to help it defense, defend itself against uh, all kinds of threats. Um, and I would add, you know, that under the president's leadership, the United States has invested above and beyond our FMF assistance, uh, over three billion dollars in the Iran, uh, I'm sorry, Iron Dome uh, system, and other. I'm, I'm reading it without glasses. The Iran Iron Dome, Dome system and other missile defense programs and systems for Israel. I would also add that uh, the Secretary did raise his concerns today with Foreign Minister Zarif about these reports. Um, you said that you will take appropriate action if it's confirmed either at the UN or unilaterally. Why is that an either or? Um, I mean, is it, it could it is be an and. Well, right. If, but if it is confirmed, it is definitely a violation of, of the UN of 2231. And as I said yesterday, yeah, and, I, and as I said and yesterday. And doesn't that require some kind of action? It does, them? And as I, but, but I'm not in a position today right, to independently confirm. If they are confirmed, if they're true, as I said yesterday, we'll take up the appropriate action inside the UN, but I don't want to, I, I don't want to convey the impression that we are only looking at multilateral or UN uh, possibilities in right. terms of measures to deal with it. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't either or. No, it's and I and didn't mean to convey and. that. If I did, I, okay. I let me take that back for the record. It okay. is and. Okay. Uh, and then uh, on the IAEA issue, which we've been going back and forth on for the past couple of days, um, uh, something seems to have changed. On Monday, you said, and I'm not saying this to embarrass you, but on uh, Monday you said you weren't aware no, of but, any... But, but, let's just go ahead and do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you said that you weren't aware of any changes in the way in what the IAEA was reporting post deal as opposed to pre deal right. and thing. And then yesterday, you seemed to say that um, you did, that the administration was confident that even though there were there was not the same amount of information or breadth of information in the last report, you guys were still confident in the IAEA being able to do this job. So anyway, the path fast forward to today. And your envoy, the uh, uh, at the at the IAEA, came out and said that the administration does think that more information should be included in the IAEA report. He said that he believes that there needs to be a, a continued effort at stringent reporting, and we would agree with that. Um, uh, and so, look, if you want to do the forensics, when you asked me two days ago, I hadn't seen. Okay. those comments you have and, to think about how to um, lie your way out so I, I answered you honestly i had not i didn't know yeah. so in the intervening 24 hours we did do some homework and and learned a little bit more and that's why i was able to talk to you yesterday about it with a little bit more granularity and i would say today i'm, I'm exactly where i was yesterday is that you know we we continue to remain comfortable and confident that the iaea can do its job and that can and can do it uh, appropriately within the confines and the requirements of the jcpoa 
And obviously we want these reports to be as thorough as they need to be and as detailed as they need to be um, so that the agency can have the, the level of confidence it needs and so that the Board of Governors can have the, the confidence. And so that needs. Obama and looks good. As I said yesterday, we remain confident that that's going to be the case going forward. And All right, this is too. enough. Yep.